The key to a word problem is to get the numbers out of the words. If you leave the numbers in the words and sit just staring at the question, you've got no chance. So get the numbers out of the words and start working on them. In this case, it tells us that she intended to cut a piece of ribbon 9 and 1 inches from one end of a piece of ribbon that is 16 and a fourth inches long. She mistakenly cut the ribbon 9 and 1 eighth inches from the other end. How far in inches is her cut from the location where she intended to make it? Okay, we've got to find out how far in 9 and 1 eighth inches is from the other end of the ribbon. So we subtract 9 and 1 eighth from 16 and 1 fourth, which gives us 7 and 1 eighth, since 1 fourth is 2 eighths that'll give us seven and one-eighths. Well, she intended to be nine and one-eighths inches in, so nine and one-eighths minus seven and one-eighth, she's two inches off. Remember, word problems open up if you get the numbers out of the words and start working with them. In this question, we're told that the positive difference between m and one-fifth is the same as the positive distance between three-fourths and three-halves. Which of the following could be the value of m? Okay, we want the positive difference between three-fourths and three-halves. In other words, the distance between those two points. We don't care to get involved with negativity or which direction it's going. It's just the distance between those points. So the easiest thing to do is to say, let's subtract three-fourths from three-halves. Okay, we want least common denominator, which would be four. So we have six-fourths minus three-fourths. So the distance between three halves and three fourths is three fourths. So we fit that in our equation where we say m minus one fifth, the distance between m and one fifth, equals three fourths. Adding one fifth to both sides, we have m equals three fourths plus one fifth. We want least common denominator, which is again going to be 20. So we've got m equals 15 twentieths plus four twentieths. So m equals nineteen twentieths. Okay, this is a difficult question in terms of the fact that it's going to require a lot of computation. It's going to require a lot of work. This, you'll notice, is at number 18. So it's towards the end, which means it's difficult. They also have a, a way of putting a difficult one towards the end to try to tie you up, make you take a lot of time with computation. This might be one where you'd come back and do it after you'd finished all the other questions on the test. But in this case, we've got animals on the farm are comprised of pigs, goats, and horses. She has four more pigs than goats and two times as many goats as horses. Which of the following could be the total number of animals she has on the farm? Okay, you look at it and you go, well, what do I do with this? The first thing you do is get the numbers out of the words. P, the pigs, is equal to goats plus four. And they're twice as many goats as horses, so two times the horses equal the goats. We have to choose one of the animals around which to work. We've got to be able to determine what's going to be something that will be a multiple or a factor of one of these numbers on the answer choices. Let's start with goats because it seems that they're orienting us to the goats. If the pigs equals the goats plus four, and two times the horses are the goats, the horses would equal one half of the goats. Okay, Our total is going to be pigs plus horses plus goats. Now let's substitute the values in. We've got goats plus four for the pigs, goats divided by one half for the horses plus the goats. When we add that up, we get two, two and one half goats plus 4. Okay, we can get rid of that 4. Let's subtract 4 from each of the numbers, which gives us 8, 12, 16, 18, and 20. So 5 halves of the goats equals one of these numbers. Now, if we're smart, we'll orient to the larger numbers, because 5 halves goats, you're going to need a pretty significant number there. If we look at 20, that looks good to me because 5 goes into it to start with. Well, if I go 5 half goats equal 20, cross multiply by 2, I get 5 goats equal 40. Yeah, 5 goats will go into that, so it tells us that we have 8 goats. If we want to look at the others just to be sure, 5 half goats equal 8, 
5 goats equals 16. Nope. 5 will not go evenly into 16. You can't have half a goat. If I have goats equal 12, 5 goats equal 24. Again, 5 doesn't go evenly into 24. 5 goats over 2 equals 16. 5 goats equal 32. 5 doesn't go evenly into 32. 5 have goats equal 18. 5 goats equal 36. 5 won't go evenly into 36. So you see, your instincts are right on this one. You also see this takes a lot of computation to be sure you're right. That's why it's kind of a quicksand problem, kind of trying to draw you in. Be aware of it, but see, this problem isn't hard once you break it apart. 